Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, there's gonna be a massive, amazing, crazy, possibly the best Sharpool event that's gonna happen this weekend. So we know that the this weekend is going to be at 10 times. We know we're gonna have a summon rush for uh Loriaka, Great Hoof Loriaka. And we know that 99% of the people will skip this fusion because it's pretty trash and the requirements are pretty annoying. However, the thing that they're doing this weekend is massive, guys. It's massive. It's arguably, like I said, from my point of view, for somebody that's at least for progressing accounts. I'm not talking about endgame accounts. For endgame accounts, it's like, you know, the Marich Kataras, all the other crazy people for Arena. But for progressing accounts, for early, mid, even late game accounts, there's an um, awesome, awesome Sharpool event going on. And it's this one. I'm just going to jump in straight to the right one. So what's going to happen is I'm gonna, we're going to look at the 10x. But first, check this out. Also, we're planning to launch a guaranteed champion event simultaneous with the 10 times. Summon champions in Void Charles while the event is active and you're guaranteed to get Demetha. Demetha by your 25th Void Shard. Let me move the SIC. That's mind-blowing. That's insane. That's crazy. The reason I'm saying this, if you're somebody that maybe is not aware who Demetha is and how powerful she is, well, Demetha is, again, arguably, the best champion that can make you an easy, unkillable clan boss team. She is insane. Her kit is as follows. This is, this is all that she's about. The A3 places the block damage buff on all allies for one turn and a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. After it's booked, it's on a three turn cooldown. What does this mean? This means you're not going to take any damage. Well, there's tons and tons and tons of sp uh, speed tunes out there using Demetha for clan boss by making her go at three to one ratio and she will always have the block damage to block the... AoE and the stun. So basically, if you get her and you have a couple of champions around there, like a Seeker, Deacon, Harris, even there's even variations with High Cartoon. So there's tons of ways of using her. She will straight up get you an unkillable clan boss team. This is huge. I know tons of people that are saying, like I know uh, one of my regulars in my chat, Drafts, is like, oh my god, I have all the champions that just need the Demetha. Well, Drafts, this one's for you, mate. And this one's for me as well, because you know what? I was having fun with my Reservoir team. I might I might still make a video on that one before whatever happens. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to get Demetha this weekend. But getting an Uncable makes it so much easier. If I get Demetha, I'm guaranteed to get at least a... Always guaranteed to uh, two key Ultra Nightmare team. Even, there's even a chance I could get a one key because I have, you know, I have the ally attack and Farrakh in the fat, I have Geomancer, so I have some good, the, some good things that can go in there and that's, oh my god, this is just, this is just crazy. I'm so excited about that one. Let's have a look at the 10 times as well. I, I'm just too, <laughs> I'm just too wowed. So, uh, they're also planning this Friday to launch 10 times for the following champions. To Hanorak. Well, Tuhanurak's pretty amazing as a champion. She has some arena uses, but mostly she's a specialist for the Hydra. She brings AO increase speed and increased defense on 3-turn cooldown. She brings uh, decreased attack and block buffs plus a spread. Which basically, if you use it on the right uh, champion or, or the right head in Hydra, you can guarantee to have uh, AoE block buffs and uh, decreased attack. She puts decreased speed on the A1 plus a continuous heal on herself and the ally with the lowest HP. And then she has the Doom Priest passive, removes one random debuff from all allies at the start of each turn. She doesn't heal, but she moves the debuffs. Also, if the allies have continuous heal, she removes two debuffs. So that makes her crazy. And at the same time, brings an ally accuracy in all battles by 70. She's just... She's She's just a god champion for PvE. Like I said, she even has some arena uses for bomb teams, as an example. She, uh, you go, go with somebody like a, uh, what's her name again? Astralis, you place bombs, she comes, spreads those bombs to everyone, and that's that's your bomb team done. And being void makes it obviously easy to know we kid and all that. So that's that's the first one on the list. Second one, Wither the Crown. Wither the Crown is another one of those champions that she's not meta for arena anymore, but she can still be extremely annoying because what she brings is lots of tankiness, good speed, AoE cleanse and massive heal, AoE increase defense and extension of uh, continuous heals, plus activating them, AoE on day one with a chance to place leech plus placing continuous heal. 
And then on the passive also places continuous heal and then she brings a resistance all battles by 50. She's a straight up a tank support healer that's she will never die. She will never die. There's there e there's even some quirky things with her built in a toxic set that used to be good for like uh normal dungeons if you're not already on hard ones. Spare her put her in a toxic and she can solo the ice column. I think even on stage 25. The next one we have Elva Autumnborn. She was a guaranteed, but she's still again a really massive champion, really amazing one, bringing AOE increase speed, increase uh, block debuffs and cleanse. Then she also has single target revive, which is pretty good. Three turn cooldown this one, three turn cooldown this one. Again, continuous heal over here. Then another passive that again heals uh, heals an ally. So again, a pretty massive one plus the speed in all battles and honestly she's another one that's pretty good for some unkillable teams but uh most of the, most of the time i guess i see her in arena she can be pretty interesting in arena because she also places that perfect veil on the ally with the lowest hp so she can kind of you know hide your tank then who else we have king Elkobar. honestly i'm not gonna look too much on him maybe i'm overseeing him but he's nothing too crazy he has too much going on in his kit that's conditional but guys leave it in the comments below are you using king Elkobar? anywhere and is he actually worth building because i think i have him on my main account but i'm just not impressed everything's too much conditional for him to be good then we have inquisitor shamel which we know inquisitor shamel is a god for hydra he's that that's his specialty he's a god for hydra because of this passive always removes the fear of true fear he can hit extremely hard with this one give him uh three buffs he's gonna ignore 100 percent of the <clears throat> defense He's also a specialist for Arena because you can use him as a an anti Taras option. Like, if you have him with this one and you're running somebody like, I don't know, a Warlord or somebody else that gets feared by Taras, by Taras' passive, put that one in the lead. He's going to cleanse the fear, true fears. He's going to boost the lead. So, he's pretty good. Another, another pretty good champion. Ugo, again, most of you already know Ugo, a god for Hydra. Decrease defense, block buffs, uh, cleanse, heal on day two, leech on day one. <laughs> Amazing. Doom Priest, another crazy crazy one that does cleansing and uh what else does cleansing does increase attack heals so don't be pretty good and then trombor trombor is from the orcs if i'm not mistaken uh yeah and he is uh where is he there you go i even have it on the free to play ally protector with increased defense on himself fortal cooldown not the best uh pretty good smack i think this one hits again with some cleanse and then a chance to land leech and weaken on day one He's uh he's pretty decent. I guess he would be a good faction war champ, or if you're uh progressing through the game, he could be your ally protector. I think looking at it, the theme of uh the stand times is cleansers because everybody in here does a cleanse. So this is it, guys. This is it. This is gonna be the 10 times. I'm really excited, like I said, for again for the Demetha. That Demetha would be huge. That would be huge. I would instantly build an unkillable. I don't care. I was having fun with the killable comps. I cannot get the perfect other champions to get right out of protection at the right time. So I think I, if I get if I manage to get Demetha, I will straight up build her. My problem is on the free to play. Problem is I'm sitting on 19 void charts. So I need six more void charts by Sunday. And I had a look through the account. And I can do like this. <clears throat> I can get one from here. And that's going to get me to 20. Then I can get, if I manage to do this, might be hard. I can get a couple more from here that will get me to 22 Void Shards. The other ones are too far away. I cannot get them. I might have a chance because in Factionals, I'm at 547. If you click the info button over here. And come over here and see. So I'm at 547. So right after this. At 585, I can get another void chart. So that would get me to 23. And then I would have to get two more from somewhere. Like, there's nowhere else. I wish I was in silver one so I could buy this void chart from here. My monthly, unfortunately, resets on the Sunday. So I'm finishing let, I'm finishing this one. Too. You know what? Let me just finish it because I want to see. <laughs> Okay, I'm finishing this one today, so I'm like five days away. So it would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then it would be on the Tuesday reset. So unfortunately, I cannot grab this one. So that's 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 really sad. The other option that I would have, but this is unfortunately, it's kind of impossible. Unless I, unless I pull shot crazy this weekend just to get Amethyst, I need to fuse resin and then I can get myself to this point. That would get me to 23, but I do not have, or 24? 24 if I do that and the factions and everything. I'm missing two rares. I'm missing a marked over here and I'm missing a theogist. So 
Maybe I go shard crazy, pull ancients, hopefully get those rares, or maybe get the epics, fuse resin, and then push to the next point with this one. I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's nowhere else I can get. If you know any other ways that I missed, guys, for getting voice shot, just leave it in the comments below. Bear in mind, I already finished the, the campaign, all of it. So there's nothing here. I'm not sure where else I can get from, but that would be that would be nice. Again, clan shop. Wish there was a was a shot here, but you know what I think I'm going to do, guys. I think I'm gonna try my best to get as even if I have to buy keys with gems, I'm gonna try and get all four of the bosses hard brutal nightmare and ultra nightmare i think i'm gonna try and focus that try and get as many chests as possible to have as many chances to get void shards give me some prayers guys i really want to dev it out the free to play that would be amazing but yeah this is gonna be it for the video today guys thank you all for watching good luck if you're gonna be pulling for them i'll be streaming tomorrow night so if you want me to pull your void shards if you're going for them join my stream let me know and let's pull some shards together and hopefully get as many them for people as possible but this is gonna be it for the video thank you all for watching i'm gonna see you in the next one peace love take care everyone bye guys <laughs>